Today I'm going to show you how to recycle waste 3D prints with this epic precious plastic shredder. If you do any amount of 3D printing, you're going to generate some waste. Skirts, rafts, failures and iterations of designs you're working on all add up pretty quickly. Now you should care about this for one of two reasons, either the cost of the environment or the cost of wasted material on your wallet. Previously, I combined a garden shredder with a modified paper shredder and an oven to produce some recycled plastic sheets. As you can see, things have escalated, so let me take you through step by step how I created this beast. When we last left off, I converted a cross-cut paper shredder to take plastic, and it did a pretty admirable job. It was limited by how thick the plastic could be, but things that were up to maybe 5mm, it could slowly crunch its way through. Only trouble was, the blades were flexing apart in the middle, and this is evidenced by examining the waste beneath. Instead of having lots of small flakes, we actually have long strands, and you can see where they're connected instead of being cut through cleanly. This left me thinking that there had to be a better way. Enter the Precious Plastics website. Run by Dave Hackens, it's basically a full open source system for recycling plastic. There's four different machines, you can download the plans and then build them yourself. The one for me, of course, was the Shredder. And on the Shredder page, there's a video tutorial of how to put it all together. And this matches the instructions which you can download and they include all of the files you need to either manufacture these yourself or send them off to someone who can do it for you. There's also a gallery with some finished machines, its results and a range of machines created by the community so you can see how different people have approached the same problem. One thing I really like is the bazaar and it's a marketplace for precious plastics machines. I didn't want to go to the hassle of making the shredder myself, so it was lucky I found a place in Australia that was selling four versions of the shredder. The first version was completely assembled. We're talking all components, all wired up and ready to go for the hefty price of 3,200 euros. They also sold the same components in kit form for 900 euros cheaper. The cheapest option was just a shredder box in kit form and that came in at 690 euros but the version I went for was the assembled shredder box at 805 euros. I ordered it, it was meant to take two weeks, took a little bit longer, but it did arrive in good condition and working well. This is the same mechanism that you see in all of those super satisfying crushing videos on the internet. The plastic is carried by the teeth and then sheared off in the small gaps. On the underside we have a sieve and that prevents the plastic from falling through until it's been shredded up enough. It'll rotate around more than once until it gets to this size. There was only one problem however, and I needed something with a lot of torque to drive it. Now on the Precious Plastics website, they recommend getting an old industrial electric motor with a gearbox, but this was too inconvenient for me. Instead, I found a cheap winch on eBay, capable of lifting 500 kilograms, so I figured the torque was gonna to be up to the job. Another huge advantage was that all the wiring was already done. I had a forward backward switch as well as an emergency stop. I was going to need to do some mucking around for disassembly, but probably nothing worse than wiring up an old secondhand motor. When I started the tear down, I was fortunate to find that it was a little bit easier than I was expecting. The large brack frame on the underside is for bolting to a garage, so I didn't need this and removed it as the first job. The automatic shutoff for when the winch reached the top was also very easy to unbolt, and I took the time to unravel the stainless steel cord because I wouldn't be needing that either. There was simple geometry for clamping the end of the stainless steel cord, so once I removed that, I took my rubber mallet and with a few well-timed hits, I was able to get the spool off. Finally, the output shaft was revealed and it does seem a waste to pull this stuff off, but who knows what project I'll use this for in future. With the end of the motor exposed and working, I found out something really great, and that's that the diameters for the output and input shafts were both 20 millimeters. I quickly jumped onto eBay and found this 20 by 20 mm flex coupler. I wasn't sure how strong it would be, but at least I had something to begin. Once it arrived, I decided I need a specialist bench to put this on. And at Bunnings Hardware Stores in Australia, we have this modular system called Racket that can hold a thousand kilos per shelf. One of the nicest things about it is that it requires no nuts or bolts for assembly. You simply line up the tangs, get a rubber mallet and tap it down into place. After getting the basic frame in place, I put in my first MDF shelf and promptly tested out its strength by jumping up and down on top of it. 
With that very important test passed, I put on the top shelf and decided to mount the motor. I slid it roughly into place, electing to put it at the back of the table to leave room up the front for equipment later on. As you might have noticed earlier, the shafts were the same diameter, but the shredder box sat about 15mm too low. And as it happens, this is the thickness of the MDF panels that come with the racket system. I could use a spare panel to make a spacer and that would line up everything perfectly. After tracing the base of the motor, I then got the discarded black bracket and use it as a template to drill the four holes. Safety warning, MDF dust is hazardous and you should avoid breathing it in. With the mounting holes in place, I simply needed to turn my attention to the underside of the table and reuse the bolts that held on the black frame to fasten the motor to the table. Now the sieve to the shredder box wasn't actually attached, but there were some holes there that needed a bit of drilling to get them to align perfectly. This was a quick and easy job, and then I used some M4 bolts to hold the sieve in place so it couldn't shift under operation and jam the machine. Next up, it was time to make my MDF spacer. So I got a ruler and took the measurements of the base and then translated these over onto my spare MDF sheet. In each corner, I drilled a hole and this would be used as a starting place for a jigsaw blade, which I would then use to connect up the holes and remove the inner rectangle. Now I'm not the best at jigsawing and that's lucky because this is gonna be on the underside of the machine and I'll never see it again. It's also worth noting that I chose to make my cutout just a little bit bigger than the exit of the shredder box because I didn't want any lips for the plastic to catch on. Job done, so I headed to a table saw and I cut out the outside of that piece. I sat everything in place to confirm that the two shafts lined up and then I marked out the outside of my adapter before removing the shredder box and tracing the inside so I could use the jigsaw one more time to put the hole through the main piece of tabletop. Once again, not my neatest job, but definitely sufficient for this purpose. The shredder box arrived without any mounting holes, so I decided I would put the mounting holes into the frame first and then use it as a template to transfer these onto the shredder box as well as onto the top of the table. After the initial holes were drilled in the MDF, I clamped that piece down onto the shredder box and then drilled into its frame. I then positioned it as planned on the top of the table and used the same holes as a template to drill through the table. The end result of all of this was three parts that perfectly aligned with the table, as well as the output of the motor aligning with the input of the shredder box as well. I talked everything up and that included my cheap 20mm coupler. The final piece of the puzzle was the big plastic container that I had spaced the shelves just far enough apart for it to fit underneath. It was time for my first shreds and boy was I about to be disappointed. Notice the shaft spinning inside the coupler on the left hand side. Even when I remove this big piece and the tiny piece remains, the same problem persists. I tightened up the coupler as much as was humanly possible and I tested out the machine again and it proved to be a little bit more reliable. I hope you agree it's super satisfying to watch it take something and munch it up into little pieces. One thing's for sure however, this thing definitely needed a hopper as bits of plastic debris were spewing out everywhere. The granules coming out the underside were way finer than anything I was getting in the past. Needing something more heavy duty for the coupler, I turned to the Australian Makers and Tinkerers group on Facebook and they helped me work through a logical solution. My stopgap was to drill a hole through the middle of the hardened shaft and then use an M4 bolt to lock the two together. With the reliability of the shredding roughly where it needed to be for now at least, I turned my attention back to that hopper. The community pictures on the Precious Plastics website gave food for thought for my intended design. I wanted my hopper to be relatively small, but also transparent. I headed to the local hardware and picked up some cheap lengths of aluminium extrusion, some rivets, as well as some hinges. I started with some rectangular tube and a couple of right angles and made my basic base that matched up to my mounting holes that I'd previously drilled on top of the shredder box. After this, I cut four 30mm lengths and mocked up the basic taper I wanted for my hopper. I could then rivet some cross supports into place, followed by some more extrusion the whole way across the top, giving me a flat surface for a lid. I riveted everything together piece by piece. Rivets are quick, cheap, easy, and you can always drill them out if you change your mind. It was time to skin my frame with some clear plastic, so I started with a newspaper template. I could then transfer the exact cutout that I needed over to some polycarbonate roof sheeting. The good thing about this stuff is it's only 0.4 of a millimeter thick, which means you can cut it easily with scissors. There's no mess and you get a really clean edge. 
Another bonus is it's oh so satisfying to peel off the protective film. I chose to stuck with rivets for attaching this. The only tricky part was drilling the hole with the rest of the frame already assembled. Because this stuff was so thin, it would easily flex around the existing frame. Two sides out of five complete, and I was really happy with my progress thus far. Next, I riveted a series of small hinges on the top and sides of the machine. Each of those was to receive a thicker piece of acrylic, and here's how the final hopper works. We have a lid that we can lift up and leave open to put things in, yet catches any debris flying up, and then we have these access ports from the side that are held shut by gravity, but can be easily accessed to clear jams when the machine is not running. Everything was together, so it was time to actually grind some stuff. And it wasn't long before my M4 bolts were sheared from the torque of the motor. So I upgraded them to M6 bolts instead, with some thicker pipe, and that lasted quite a bit longer. Shredding performance is quite good. Anything small is wasted in only a few seconds. You do have to run the machine for a little while afterwards to clear all the small pieces. Things like this Benchy stand no chance at all, and I almost feel a little bit sorry for it watching it get destroyed in this way. This failed Palette 2 test print called Australberry also received the same dark fate. But what about something a lot tougher? Something printed with 60% infill and extra perimeters. Well this was a failed part from my Lowrider 2 CNC and the machine with a little bit of jogging back and forth was able to crush it up as well. It's a pretty violent process, but if you're patient, you should be able to crush and granulate just about any waste print. By this stage, I had killed the M6 bolts and had upgraded to M8, but my do-it-yourself coupler was starting to show some real wear and tear. At least the hopper was doing a great job of containing all of the debris, catching 99% of it. Finally, the results, and the output from the paper shredder after several passes was a lot coarser than what I was getting from a single pass on this shredder. It's been a bit of cost and a bit of effort, but it seems to work quite well. This machine is proof of the phrase, you're only as strong as your weakest link. The motor is definitely powerful enough, as is the shredder box strong enough, but my coupling methods definitely need some attention. I have no idea how the methods shown in the official tutorial is strong enough, but I guess they intend to use theirs to shred milk bottles. This hasn't been cheap, but I'm still way ahead of the price of the assembled item that I found, as well as some other rival products. And I have to thank my patrons, because projects like this just wouldn't be possible without them. And speaking of patrons, Nicholas brought the Replay 3D website to my attention. Replay 3D lets you send in your own collected waste prints for conversion to filament. It's a pretty interesting concept, and there's links for more information below in the description. So what's next for my setup? Well, after fixing the coupler, I'm going to process all of this. And the good news is I'm getting a much better melt with the smaller particles compared to before. I've got my new Lowrider 2 CNC to try cutting some things out of the sheets, but ultimately my aim is to recycle and make my own filament. If you've got a product that you'd like to see featured on this channel, then please get in touch. If you've got any thoughts or comments on how I can go with this, please leave them down below in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy recycling 3D prints. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.